Greetings folks, today we have the 2019 Lenovo Y740 featuring the i7-8750H of the RTX 2060. We're going to do a repaste using Thermo Grizzly Cryonaut. The factory paste that Lenovo uses is fantastic. There is no need to do this. Doing the repaste today was worth virtually nothing. Maybe one or two degrees Celsius margin of error stuff at best. If you want to see those results, go ahead and skip to the end of the video. If you want to see how this is torn down, then just stay put and watch. All of the screws on the silver part of the chassis and the top part of the screen are short. All of the screws on the black part of the chassis where the ventilation is are long. Everything that you see today can be dismantled with a Phillips screwdriver and of course one of the pry tools that I use in the iFixit ProTech toolkit. Link in the description below for that toolkit. I highly recommend those. I've seen a lot of people get into trouble without using something like this. And you're going to see a specific case as I try to take off the cooler in a little bit where having this toolkit was a godsend. Once the screws are removed, just take your fingers and slowly work the outer edge of the bottom panel away from the chassis. It should take you about a minute to remove that. Very simple. When I'm plugging the battery and the fans, for example, rather than just grabbing a hold of the wires and yanking away, you can grab a hold of the wires and gently pull to assist, but I like to use some of those plastic tools inside of that toolkit that I'm talking about and slowly work away at the plug as well. The last thing you want to have to deal with is repairing a wire that you pulled out of one of those plugs. There are six screws that hold the cooler to the motherboard. Beware, these screws have relatively soft heads, and Lenovo used a decent amount of Loctite holding them in place. When I got to screw number two, this is where it was very important that I had this toolkit on hand, as I was able to work that screw out slowly using various sizes of bits. I literally spent three minutes removing screw number two. The rest came out with relative ease. Removing the fan plugs just like the battery, assisting the wires with your fingers, using your thumbnails and plastic pry tools, whatever it takes to get the job done, but do not damage or pull one of the wires from the plug itself. Now there's no need to remove the Wi-Fi card or unplug the wires from the Wi-Fi card itself, but you will have to remove the wires from the channel that the wires lay into attached to the fan. The only thing keeping the cooler in place now is the blue goo that Lenovo decided to use as thermal paste. Not too sure what it is, but I must commend them as it is quite a remarkable thermal interface material. Removing the old thermal paste using isopropyl alcohol, paper towels, q-tips, microfiber cloths, and then finally finishing it up with coffee filters is a general method to my madness. As long as you can get this thing squeaky clean, leave no residue behind, you should be good to go. I'm a fan of the Thermo Grizzly Cryonaut. It is my first line of defense when doing a repaste application. I always start with this. Link in the description below for that. Once you apply that, I'm going to drop the cooler straight down and just reassemble it. The only thing to look out for here is guiding the Wi-Fi cables back into the channel that they came from. Make sure you plug in your fans or your battery. I've done this once or twice before in the past. Ha ha. Now, what does this do results-wise? Well... Let's have a look. All right, folks, one side of the screen, we have Lenovo's blue Smurf goo, and on the other side of the screen, we have the Thermo Grizzly Cryonaut. Thermally, can you tell a difference? The GPU is running into the high 60s. Nice job there, Lenovo. And the CPU, once the wattage settles at around 45 watts, does run at around 80 degrees. This is uncapped. I'm having a ball in this game. Thermal performance is outstanding on this chassis and a repaste yield no results worthy of your time. However, one year down the road when that Smurf goo does dry up, now you'll know what to do. Question is, what side is the Smurf goo and what side is the Cryonaut? Let's have a discussion down below. You let me know. And this is Bob of all trades. Peace out.